going on YouTube? I'm gonna make this uh short. Deontay Wilder, Chris Ariola, we all know. If you don't know, you know, they fighting this weekend in Alabama. Birmingham, Alabama, not Birmingham, England. Okay. So anyway, they're fighting. And so um you know this video is uh sort of you know <laughs> Uh, dedicated to why, because here he goes again, man. You know, kind of, uh, to me, to me, in my personal opinion, t you know, he's taking a dig, you know, at Deontay Wilder, but it's, it's whatever, man. So, um, anyway, he compares uh, Chris Ariola to a, a Buster Douglas, pretty much saying he's like a game day player. You get what I'm saying? So, um, a guy that doesn't like to practice, and we got, you know, I don't know about you, but I've seen guys like this, you know, that didn't practice all that well, but when it came to game day, you know, they, they were, you know, on and popping, you know what I'm saying? They, they could play very well. It wasn't really too enthusiastic or really into doing practice and stuff like that. But when it came to game day, man, these guys can play. But in, in saying that, you know, try to compare him to a, a Buster Douglas or even a Riddick Bowe. Let's say Riddick Bowe. He didn't mention this, but Riddick Bowe was like pretty much the same way. I think it was, um, who was that trainer? Oh, man, I want to believe it. Emmanuel Stewart uh, trained uh, Riddick Bowe. But anyway, pretty much the trainer uh, mentioned by Riddick Bowe was like, man, you know, I knew he can get there. You know, as far as being a heavyweight champion, but I didn't think he had the dedication, you know, the state heavyweight champion. You get what I'm saying? L lack of discipline and focus and stuff like that. And that's been cr pretty much the story of uh, Chris Ariola's career. You know, lack of discipline, a lack of focus, not knowing when to, like, buckle down and just dedicate himself to a sport the to the sport and uh, you know he's not the only guy that has you know like maybe ballooned up uh between fights and stuff like that but at least some guys they're able to like maybe stay in camp or stay focused in camp and do what two to three months of training and whatnot and just uh you know not not, not uh succumb to any of their vices you know what i'm saying so, uh, you know, with that being said, um, it was mentioned in uh, o Odu's videos and stuff like that, that, you know, um, Chris Ariola is going to go to the body and he's going to do this and he's going to do that. No, he, he, even if he does go to the body, he, he didn't he go to the body on um, Travis Kaufman, you know, Fred Cassie. Come on, man. These these aren't like Kubrick Pulev's. This is not a Derek Dizor. You know, Chris Ariola has maybe fought or beaten over the past couple of years. You know what I'm saying? I can't name any names that Chris Ariola has like beaten that like stands out or any former champion or anything like that. You know, this is just dude's life story. You know, you always coming up short. You get what I'm saying? So it marries over to these, you know, these guys' boxing careers. You know, these guys' lives, you know, these guys' boxing careers pretty much mimics what's going on in their life. You know, the hard luck guy like Hammer and Hank Lundy and stuff like that. If you, if you can just get it together, coulda, woulda, shoulda. That's pretty much the story of their lives, you know what I'm saying? You know, not to talk about anybody or make experience your comments, but... That's what it is. So, the only difference he made in this fight for um, Chris Ariola is what he's done. Is he, he, you know, he ran. I guess he said he, you know, he's been running and stuff like that. But it's not going to help him. One, one being is because he's a defense. That's what something uh, Dwyer mentioned in his video. He's like, oh, well, he gets hit a lot. You know, I said, oh, okay, he gets hit a lot. Uh, okay. So, um,. There's a chance that the fight can end on cuts. There's a chance this guy can get knocked uh, uh, knocked out. He's going against a guy that got a uh, 97% uh, knockout ratio, probably more than that, 98. You know? 
So, I mean, we got to look at that stuff, man. We got to look at that. Uh, Deontay Wilder is going to be in shape. He's going to dance around the ring. Um, they do have a common opponent, but man, it's the verb, but styles make fights. But at the same time, you know, um, it was mentioned that, oh, he's going to uh, chase, you know, he's going to be able to cut down the ring better than Bermain Stavern. Chris Ariel don't move all that much better than Bermain Stavern. Let's be honest, you know what I'm saying? If he moved all that much better, had better footwork and stuff like that, he wouldn't have been, you know, he wouldn't, uh, <laughs> he wouldn't have ran into Bermain Stavern's traps and stuff like that while this dude's laying up on the ropes and whatnot. But, man, Y'all, y'all let me know what y'all think, man. I got I got Deontay Wilder knocking uh, Chris Seriola out. I got him knocking him out. Yeah, you know, you know Deontay Wilder's been very respectful of Chris Seriola and stuff like that, saying he's a good opponent. Yeah, he's a good opponent, man. He's a game opponent. Now, can he win? Yes. Is he going to win? In my opinion, it's very s- slim to none chance, man. It's like maybe 10% chance that he wins. You know, this is all um, based on how Deontay Wilder is going to perform. And that's what people are going to be judging. They're going to be judging uh, Deontay Wilder. They're not going to be passing judgment on Chris Ariola because nobody thinks this is a 50 50 fight at all. So this is Deontay Wilder's uh, fight to give up, man. You know, Chris Ariola does have, Chris Ariola does have a chance because he's getting in the ring. But other than that, that's it. All right, man, I'll catch y'all later. Bye.